In today's RimPy tutorial, we are going to go over um, variables and what the different types of variables are. So if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. Um, I've got lots more great RimPy and visual novel tutorials coming up in the future. So again, hit the subscribe button so you never miss one of my new videos. Also, be sure to check the description below where you can find some free ways to support me as well as some monetary ways to support my work and my tutorials. And also be sure to check out my other channel uh, in which I do Daz Studio tutorials. If you're unfamiliar with Daz Studio, it's a great piece of free software that lets you create high quality 3D graphics that you can use in your visual novels. All of the uh, visual examples that I use uh, in all of my tutorials are made using Daz Studio. All of that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's tutorial, which like I said, is about variables. So most of you are probably familiar with variables, especially if you uh, remember anything from, from algebra back in middle school and high school. Um, especially if you've ever worked with any programming languages before, you're probably familiar with variables. For our purposes, a variable is just a value that can change. Um, and we're going to talk about four types of variables today, number variables, booleans, strings, and lists. Um, there are more types of variables, but these are the main ones that we use in, in RenPy. Uh, the first one is a number variable, which is probably the easiest one to understand. It is simply a number. So like 26 or 92.4 or 12, these are all number variables. If you've used other programming languages, um, you might uh, be used to a distinction between integer variables, which are whole numbers, and floating point point variables, which are decimal numbers. But uh, for Python, which RenPy is based on, it treats all of those as number variables, so there's no difference between a floating point and an integer. All right, the next type of variable is a Boolean variable, um, which is a true or false value only. So Booleans can only be true or false, no in between, nothing else. The next one is a string variable, and a string is just a string of characters such as a word. Um, it can also be a number, but the number is handled as text, so you can't add or subtract to it. You can't do any kind of math with it. It's just the characters, like number 24 is not really the number 24. It's the characters 2 and 4 next to each other. And the final one is a list which is simply a list of different uh, variables. So it can be a list of numbers or a list of words, um, or you can mix uh, words or variables or Booleans. It can be pretty much anything. So the next thing we're gonna go over is how to declare a variable or how to set a variable. So on all of these, I have our four variable types, number, Boolean, string, and list. And before each of those, I've written the word default. Default is a keyword that RenPy uses uh, that you should use whenever you set a variable for the first time. And the way that you set a variable is just by calling the variable default. You can name it pretty much anything you want with very few exceptions. Uh, so like for a number variable, I've just called default number, that's the name of the variable, and then an equal sign, and then after that you put your number. So I'm going to do default number 24. So now I've set the variable number to 24. Um, for the next one, the Boolean value, which like I said can be either true or false, uh, you set that one in much the same way, the uh, keyword default, and then the name of the variable, in this case I'm just calling it Boolean, and then either true or false. So whenever you use this one, you have to capitalize true or false. So if I set that to true, it has to start with a capital T or otherwise it, it won't work. You'll get an error if you try to use that variable. Uh, the next one is string, and strings we've already used a little bit. If I go back to our script.rpy, every time you put something in uh, the quotation marks, um, that's basically a string. Uh, but using the string variable, we can call that uh, variable later. So for instance, default string, and I'm going to call this Steven, the first name of one of our characters. And that is how you define a string variable. And then for a list, you just have to put your list in brackets and separate each value by commas. So if I put, uh, programmers commonly call these square brackets. So if I do a left square bracket, I can do 24 true Steven in quotation marks. 
And now that list contains all three of those variables and there are different ways that we can manipulate those either together or independently and those we will get into later. So that is how you declare the variables and if you want to call those variables later, if you want to change them, if you want to do anything to them, you have to use Python code, which don't let that intimidate you. Um, I said in my other videos, Python is really, really simple to use, especially at the basic level, which is all you really need to use in, in RenPy in the beginning, really most of the time. But whenever you call one of those variables, you have to let RenPy know that you're going to start using Python code. So RenPy has lots and lots of built-in functions, like everything here, the label, scene, show, these are functions that are built into RenPy um, that it knows what to do with. However, when we start manipulating variables, if you declare a variable, RenPy knows how to do that, but it doesn't know how to manipulate variables. So you have to let it know that you're going to start using Python code, and the way that you do that is with a dollar sign. There's another way of doing that, which we'll go over in a moment, but if it's just a single line, you just start it with a dollar sign, and that tells it that only that line is going to be all Python code. So for instance, if I wanted to change my number variable to 24, I would just do dollar sign number equals, uh, let's do 25. There we go, so now if I call that number variable, it is now going to equal 25 instead of 24. And I can do the same thing with my other variables. I can just do dollar sign boolean equals false, and now that boolean value is equal to false instead of true. With my name, I can say dollar sign string equals Eileen, and now that string variable is equal to Eileen. And that's how you change variables. There's also a way that you can tell it that you're going to do a whole block of code in Python. And the way that you do that is with the keyword Python and then a colon. So remember from before, whenever we have a colon, that lets the program know that we're starting a new block. So everything that's indented under that all goes together. And the way that that works here is that that lets it know that everything that's indented under that block is going to be Python code. So now we don't have to use the dollar sign anymore. That's taken care of with a Python keyword. And when I hit enter, it'll automatically tab me over on the next line. And then I can change whatever I want. Number equals 25. Boolean equals false. String equals Eileen, so all of that works. And then I can do list equals all of those, 25. Remember to capitalize the false. There we go, and then when you're done with your Python code, don't forget to backspace so you're not indented anymore. So anything else that you enter is not going to be inside of that coding block. And that is pretty much the basics of variables. So as long as you understand the different types, number, boolean, which is true or false, string, which is just a string of characters, usually that's a word or a series of words, and then a list is just a collection of variables. They can either be all the same type or different types. Doesn't really matter, just whatever your purposes call for. And remember, whenever you want to manipulate variables, if you want to change them, or sometimes we'll, we'll talk later about how to add number variables together, all of that is done in Python code, which you either have to do with a Python coding block or by preceding each line with a dollar sign. All right, so if you got something out of this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And again, check the description below, below for some ways that you can support me. And don't forget to check out my other channel on Daz Studio. And that will do us for this one. Be sure to join me for my next video when I'll show you some cool things that we can do with variables in our game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.